39 persons who participated in that three-day Democracy Hub demonstration against Galam Singh. And that was why they were on the streets over the last three days, from Saturday uh, through to yesterday, a few of them. They were protesting against the impact of illegal mining that we are seeing all around us. They've been remanded into custody after an Accra circuit court denied their bail application. Now, they were also slapped with multiple charges after the arrest on, on Saturday, September 21. Now, uh, we're going to get into that shortly and the, and the and at least the various charges that they've been slapped with conspiracy to commit crime, namely unlawful assembly, unlawful assembly causing unlawful damage, offense and all those will run through them shortly. But this, this is the, the level of the heavy security presence at the Accra Circuit Court earlier today. Uh, the, the, the court was visibly, um, as it were, washed with police personnel because these persons who were picked up were arraigned before court earlier today with heavy security and police presence there, and they were in, in, in the custody of the Ghana Police Service. You see some of them hugging each other. We understand the lady you see there in black is, is pregnant, we understand, um, and she is also amongst those persons who have been detained, this pregnant lady. And also we got reports that one of the persons who has been detained is also suffering from asthma, an asthmatic patient who's diabetic as well, um, and also with, with um, hepatitis B. Now, there are, there are concerns about the, 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 as to how, really, um, these persons are, as it were, um, going through this process and how things are playing out, especially with their bail application that has been denied. And there are some lawyers who are raising questions about how things played out earlier today in court. The Ghana Police Service issued a statement earlier today. They detailed from their perspective how things have been going as we speak. Here's just a, uh, highlights of it. 39 of the people who were arrested for engaging in various acts of lawlessness at the 37th intersection in Accra, 22nd, 23rd of September, were put before the court today. As I've indicated to you, the court remanded 28 of them, 28 out of the 39 were remanded into police custody and the re remaining 11 were put into prison custody. So none of them are free as we speak. 30 of the accused persons are to reappear before the court on 8th October 2024, while nine others are to reappear before the court on the 11th of October 2024. So these two groups, that's the 28 in police custody 11 in prison custody are all going to be in these areas. That's a prison custody and police custody from now till the 8th and the 11th of October. Also, the remaining suspects will be put before the court tomorrow. So this 39 we saw today, they are not the only ones. Remember yesterday, according to the protesters, the leadership of the protesters legal team, um, about 46 of them, but the account had been picked up and they say there could be more, actually. So the 39 we saw today is just a first group. The police confirms this in their statement that the second group or the rest of the protesters will be put before court tomorrow. And the case is being prosecuted. And take note of this. The last part of the statement that we have from the police service, as we have it, they're going to put on the screen. This case is being prosecuted by the Office of the Attorney General. That's Grace Ansakrofi, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Director of Public Affairs, you have there. And a fundamental question that we're going to be asking um, a private legal practitioner when he joins us shortly as to really um, this last part, whether it raises questions. Because yes, by practice and, and by procedure, the Ghana Police Service prosecutes cases for and on behalf of the Attorney General's office. But when the cases of misdemeanors or light so-called cases like this, you would now want to understand the direct involvement of the Office of the Attorney General in this matter. Well, then again, we'll ask the questions, get some answers to it here on Ghana tonight shortly. Um, but we've been following this quite closely. A number of uh, the, the protesters have also been talking 
And in fact, the persons who are associated with them, some of their family members have also been talking to us about what is they are going through and how they are not able to, as to uh, speak to them and have access to their relatives. The lawyers say they cannot also get access to their clients. They've been denied contact to their client over the last three days that they've been arrested as well. And then also issues related to some matters that have come up so far. So those are the issues that are um, coming up right now. And uh, it's one that we we'll keep an eye on as well. One of the relatives um, that we spoke to earlier also give indication of what they intend to do going forward, especially because of reports of their relative not being too well. They say they received a call from the Ghana Police Service that their relative who has been detained as part of these protesters is not well. Take a look. We scouted through the various police stations and then at around 9 p.m. we found her at Kaneshi. I requested from the counter MCO to speak to my sister. What she could do best was to refer me to the station officer. And then the station officer said they were working under specific um, instructions from the regional command that um, those who were arrested in relation to the protest um, shouldn't be allowed any form of access by anybody, not a family member, not even a lawyer. Despite several attempts, including a return to the regional police headquarters the next day. Well, so let's stay a bit further on this. Private legal practitioner Martin Pebo is joining us on Zoom for a quick conversation on this here on Ghana Tonight. Lawyer Martin Pebo, appreciate the time. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. Hello, lawyer. Good evening to you. Yes, good evening, Mr. Kansi. Thank you. Good Thank you. Thank you indeed. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. Right. Now, prior to... Uh, they, that's the protesters appearing before or being arraigned before the court today, their legal counsel had indicated that, one, they did not know the police stations that they were being held. Two, they had been denied access to their clients. Three, they did not know of the charges that were being leveled against them until they went to court today. I mean, is, is this consistent with the practice as you do know it? Not at all. Not at all. This is a case of turning the pride is what would pertain in a banana republic. Not a democratic state such as Ghana. So it tells you that we've gone four steps backwards. I mean, that it looks like a joke. I can't believe that. This is what is happening to Kwame Nkrumah's Ghana under Dr. George Ekufudampare. You see, I, I, I just can't believe it. Because, I mean, if it last year's own, where protesters were uh, arrested, the public uproar, remember a year ago, we were there, we went to join Oliver and doing such a similar demonstration in September, right? <laughs> With the arrest, the public showed a lot of revulsion. And then Ekufu Dampari came out with nine statements, etc. All right? Even the former regional suffered a transfer as a result of that demonstration, right? You see that Dr. Garba Pebby is no longer in charge of the Greater Accra Regional Command mm. because a few persons were arrested, etc. So how come that one year on, one year on, protesters are arrested not allowed to see council, not allowed to have food, contrary to Article 19, Clause 2. 19, Clause 2 is very clear that when you charge a person, you should, one, give that person access to a lawyer and other facilities to enable the person to prepare the defense Right, be able to what prepare that uh, for the trial and so on and so forth. And of course, there is the one that says a person is innocent until proven guilty. So because of that, you are not to use uh, uh, they say uh, custody or they say denial of bail as a form of punishment. Mm -hmm. So the police were required to number one arraign them within forty eight hours. 
the Supreme Court has made it clear that 48 hours is 48 hours, notwithstanding weekends and public holidays. And, 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 and that's, that's, that's the next question I was getting to, because according to some of the, the, the lawyers for these protesters, some of them were picked up on Saturday, and they've been in police custody until today, Tuesday. That's well over the 48 hours. So could the police have gotten them arraigned before the court on, say, yesterday, Monday, which was a holiday? At the time, the one who had to implement, that's any Yeboah, JSC, gave a protocol. He issued a protocol in May 2020 on how to activate the weekend court and public holiday court. I have used it on five different occasions during ACP Abogos trial, during the disturbances in the north, Nalerugu, uh, when some people were arrested from the north and brought down here, okay, and so on and so forth. So we've done it. And then during some other cases in Circuit Court 1. So I've appeared before Justice Fieta Sewa Sarubotri during the Abogos trial on Constitution Day, that was 7 January 2022. Even the Attorney General was present. Of course, we are asking the Attorney General to resign. So I'm not saying it today in a positive light for him because he should have resigned a long time ago. But 7 January 2022, we're in court with him. Constitution Day, right? Now, before Justice, let's say we appeared, and a little bit people, we appeared before uh, say, Justice uh, Obri, Francis Obri. Then other ones, then uh, Justice, the, the one in the second court, I could name them. So, you remember the first time Oliver was arrested? That mm -hmm. was the same thing. They didn't arraign him within 48 hours. And we kept giving the police education that, no, there is a way to do it. Justice Eni Yeboa had given the protocol. <laughs> Just go and see a registrar. Then the registrar will escalate it to the higher apps. Then they will arrange for a judge. That's the protocol. I Remember, see. this is the decision. I, I took the case to court. And the Supreme Court gave that decision in December 2019. That is just the Sophia Kufu's validatory judgment. That was the last judgment she gave when she was leaving the bench. Uh, and is that the paper number two, correct? Number four. That's a weekend court. Table number see. four versus attorney general number four. The table number two is a non bailable offenses case that every decision is bailable. And in this yes. case, these persons have been denied bail. They are still going to be in police and prison custody until the 8th and 11th of October. That's the development as well today. Yes, so that's very sad. But the saving grace is that under the law, even though it's been adjourned to 8th and 11th, the law permits us to go tomorrow, the next day, etc., with cogent reasons to show why the judge should take the bail applications before the 8th and the 11th. And respectfully, I think this is a good case in which the, 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 such an application can be made to abridge the time. You remember this, uh, this man's case, uh, Nineku, uh, Nineku uh, the Beige Capital case. Mm -hmm. He went to court. He was denied bail. Then the next day, or was it the two days after, they went back. Uh, this lawyer said, you're sorry. Went back to abridge the time. Yes, I'm citing that one because Nineku's case was in the public. But cases that the uh, media don't cover, we do those cases too, where we abridge the time. So nobody's going to wait till 8th October and 11th of October. No, in the next few days, uh, lawyers will be going back to the court to abridge the time and to have the bail uh, application remade. Because, hey, citizens' li lives are precious, eh? Yes, yes. A citizen's life is more precious than the properties that are led to have been destroyed, etc. So we are not to start punishing citizens even when there has not been a trial. No, the police don't need them in custody for two weeks. No, it it's not true. You know, sometimes you can't blame the court because... It's the police who are seized with their docket, so they usually they like to just remand people. Uh, they let them keep them in remand. Police don't have a judicial mind. Police are not judicial. They they are police. They like to lock up citizens. Unfortunately, that's what George Kufudampari is doing, and it's unfortunate. Look, it's what I can say. That's what I'm saying. IGP has to go here, yeah, Madam Ando Kofi. When we reported the chairman who to me case, the Akunta mining case, why mm -hmm. didn't they prosecute that case? 
if they had prosecuted that case, because of who Chairman Wunt means, can you imagine the chilling effect it would have had on other Galamseyers if they saw every day Mr. Kansi reported today in court, Chairman Wunt means case, this is what has happened in court, blah, blah, blah. Can you imagine how it was? It would have oh, oh, so you want the IGP sacked because of, you want the IGP sacked because of this? Yes, because he failed to prosecute the chairman wound to me case, and also because he has ab ab abused the rights of these citizens. Uh, the, this uh, demonstration is too much. IG is being too political. He's being too political. Who is he defending? President Kufuado. Kufuado is down. Kufuado has failed. Ghanaians have given the verdict. So why is IG continuing being uh, so, so, so political, being more Catholic than even the Pope? Why? Ebu Fado is down. The verdict is out. This is well, the worst president we've had. Who said he would put his line and his presidency on the line? He ended up just being a sloganier, right? Just sloganeering. So why is IG Dan Perry defending Why is uh, Madame Andokofi defending him? Why? Council, so, and, and finally, and this is a quick one before I let you go. Uh, we're seeing this case as well by, by procedure, the police prosecutes cases for and on behalf of the Attorney General's office. That's normal procedure. But in this case, based on the police's own statement, which we'll put portions of, of it on the screen shortly, they say on the last point that this case is being prosecuted by the Attorney General's office. Does anything strike you there as, as reason to, to raise questions, really? Absolutely. Absolutely. The first thing is that usually uh, quite a number of the offenses, okay, that are, are on the charge sheet from what we've heard, unlawful assembly, for instance, it's a misdemeanor. When we say misdemeanor, it's usually the, one of the lowest crimes. So usually people are not sent to jail for misdemeanors. They are fined if they are found guilty, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the attorney general usually doesn't prosecute these cases unless there is politics in it, unless there is politics in it. So you see why I said that I political, being more Catholic. I was destroyed. I unlawful assembly. It's a misdemeanor. It's a distraction of property that we need to see the charge to see what kind of property, because that one, it has two levels. There's a misdemeanor, and then there can be the second degree felony. But once I've not seen the I stick out my neck to say uh, second degree felony. The difference is that when the value of the property is less than one million, then it's a misdemeanor. But when it is above one million, cities, then it's a second degree felony. So once right. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, uh, Lawyer Martin Quibble, a point well made indeed, and uh, I think that you made quite clearly um, the details of the, the position of the law on this matter and some of the issues and how things are playing out now, which raises fundamental questions about uh, the procedure as has been employed now. But I thank you. Thank you for time here on Ghana tonight. I, I really do ap apologize for the cranky nature of the connection to Lawyer Martin Quibble today, but he's a private legal practitioner joining us here on Ghana tonight. Coming up